Welcome back to the channel. 11th March 2020, the WHO declared COVID-19 as a global pandemic. And since then, it has been a non-stop fight against COVID all over the world. Novel coronavirus, a small virus that can enter in our body and can cause havoc. It can affect multiple systems inside our body. And simultaneously, COVID as a pandemic can enter the society and create another havoc affecting multiple systems around us like our economy, like jobs, like our financial life or family life or social life and probably everything around us. This way, COVID is not just affecting our physical health but also affecting our mental health to a great extent. I feel that there is a need to identify these issues and take appropriate actions in time for that. To discuss more on these issues, today we have with us Tanuja Bapre. Ms. Tanuja Bapre holds a Master's in Counseling Psychology from Tata Institute of Social Sciences. She has been working in the area of mental health, psychosocial well-being and technology-assisted counseling. Since 2017, she has been serving as a program coordinator with iCall, a national level technology assisted mental health service based in TISS. So, hi Tanuja, welcome. Hi, happy to be here. It's, it's our pleasure actually to have you here and talk about this very important issue of uh, mental health, uh, not just directly related to COVID, but what I was talking in the introduction was that there are many other systems which have probably got affected due to a uh, pandemic and uh, how do one you know deal with that in a, on a mental level so the first uh, big problem that i think we can see is uh, there is job loss so there is a huge crisis of uh, people losing their jobs being laid off how is that affecting the mental health um, so you're right when you say that the mental health has really impacted multiple areas of people's lives. Even, so even if it is a peripheral issue, I mean, there's a pandemic outside, nobody in my family is affected. But even the fact that it's out there and something that we are really unprepared for brings in a lot of uncertainty. It has an impact on my life and therefore it, the trickling down effect, it impacts on my mental health. Sure. Now, what we're seeing is a lot of times, so it's not only just the lockdown or just the pandemic that has caused an issue, but it is really sort of the loss in terms of changing plans, predictability in people's lives. Yeah. That has brought in a lot of distress for people as well. Um, they don't know what to expect. Um, they wanted their year to be something very different. But yet again, sort of the second wave coming in, especially in India, um, that led to a lot of, you know, disappointment, sadness and general lack of motivation in people. When we look at job loss, we may say that it's an issue related to career, uh, but it's also linked to financial security for families, um, especially families who are, may already be struggling due to pay cuts, uh, due to lack of bonuses, lack of appraisals, or one family member losing a job and then the family running on only one salary. What has also happened and something that we also get at the helpline is a lot of narratives of people saying that the workload has increased exponentially. But if I don't keep on do working at the same pace, I risk job loss. Um, so I know what I'm doing is really not helping me and is really stressful, but I have to continue doing it because otherwise I can't risk losing this job. Yeah. But whereas we look at rural India, again, a lot of back migration, right? People coming, going back home um, and then losing sources of income. We have heard stories and we have heard narratives where people have said that, you know, we have literally sold off utensils from our homes. We have sold off cattle um, to be able to ensure that the home that, you know, they're just able to make ends meet. So the picture of how job loss impacts really depends on different intersections of where your social location falls, um, whether it really impacts differently for a woman um, or who may be the sole breadwinner of a family, it impacts differently for a man uh, who may be from an upper caste versus a man who may be from a lower caste. So what I'm trying to say is that depending on which intersections and which social locations you fall on, the effect of it may be much, much more higher for you. But while we're talking about this as a financial concern or this be impacting your career growth and so on, um, it is also something that is linked to how we experience our well-being, how we experience stress and how um, how much worry, uh, how much time do we spend worrying in a 
any given day about what happens to my work, whether my family will be okay, worrying about future and so on. In severe cases, we also see sometimes this translating into people feeling vulnerable in form of feeling suicidal, in form of feeling suicidal, increased suicidal ideations or even self-harm tendencies. Um, so yes, it's very closely linked to people's mental health. We are seeing loss of job impacting anxiety, depressive symptoms, lack of motivations, increased conflicts in families, um, but also people who are already vulnerable, you know, people who are already struggling financially, people who um, already had maybe some sort of a diagnosis of a mental health um, concern are even more affected than these issues. Right. I think it's, it's, there is an uncertainty which is like, you know, which is not like the previous job loss, I guess. The previous job loss, they used to have like, okay, I'll go and find another one now. Right now, that's also a question in people's minds. So, there are many students from India go abroad for education, higher education, or even in India, um, there are a lot of problems with the higher education currently, uh, which are seen. Like, people don't know when the in- institutes are going to open. Are they going to be in person? Are they going to be in hybrid? Uh, how does my resume looks after I do this particular course, which is so-called online or whatever. So that there is, I think there must be also some effect on that population, uh, which is a, uh, which is like facing these issues. Um, so even on the helpline, really, you know, we regularly get calls from so many students who say that I am doing this online. Almost a year has passed. I have no clue what I have learned. Um, I am doing this. My degree is over, but I don't know whether I'm going to get a job. This is this, yeah? yeah. And that it's not a perceived fear, you know. I mean, sometimes we have anxiety. We don't know what will happen, what future holds. This is not a perceived fear. It's a real fear. Um, there really is a very big question mark in terms of what is going to happen. Are there going to be enough jobs? What are the kind of jobs that they will get? Are they prepared for that? You know. Um, so that those are sort of big concerns. But I think one of the biggest things that we have been seeing is you know students learners and their anticipation of every every time somebody enrolls into some course or most of the times you enter with some sort of an idea in your head you know that this is how my life will change after i do that and this is how my life will be different or students who are who are planning to go abroad to international universities have gotten admission but can't really travel so um, it's really sort of sometimes you know the loss that students are also dealing with is you know um, the loss of hopes and dreams the loss of predictability in their lives of how their lives could have looked um, and something that they couldn't experience aspect of not knowing the uncertainty is very very high when we're looking at this group Um, and what happens is after a point of time it trickles down and it impacts people's motivation to study their engagement how much they feel connected it's also that people are realizing that they need physical connections they need those memories they need those experiences they go on to form a part of how you experience your college or how you experience your academics Um, and not having that is leading to a lot of lack in motivation, sometimes even feelings of anxiety, depression, panic. Uh, these are also some of the concerns that we are seeing um, mm-hmm. in students, in learners. Of course, there is a lot of anxiety about what comes next. Um, and a lot of work that we do with clients goes on to sort of talking about, um, okay, let's take it one day at a time. And we don't know what is in the store. Um, so all we can do is be curious about it. Uh, Are there any uh, counselling or are there any mental health awareness uh, sort of drives are done even at the institute levels? Uh, I mean, or they can be done? Uh, How do you, what do you feel about? Um, Yes and yes. Mm -hmm. Um, So one is that due to this entire pandemic and how people are experiencing, how all of this is impacting them, mental health has really become like almost, you know, a household conversation. It has become... I mean, there is a lot more focus on mental health than never before. Companies, educational institutes, they all are realizing that there is a lot of, um, you know, there is a lot that everybody is struggling with and there is some support and some handholding that is definitely required. So, in fact, as a service for us, we have requests for workshops, training, sessions, uh, more than we have had ever before this, you know, Uh, because that's really what everybody feels is really required right now. 
Yeah. Of course, mental health has been one of the topics and one of the areas which has been ignored for a very very long time. Um, so this is not an ideal way in which it should take center stage. Uh, but yeah, there is a lot more awareness. There is a lot more openness also. Mm-hmm. So one, yes, there is a lot more awareness. Of course, institutions which already had mental health setups were able to use those mental health setups and adapt them to the pandemic requirements of the pandemic. but we have had lot of requests from people who have said that you know help us set up you know uh, help us extend this helpline to more people do more workshops for us how can we manage grief how can we talk about grief loss and so on so a lot of work that we have been doing with these institutions and their stakeholders have been on well-being of different people parents teachers students their loved ones yeah all of these key stakeholders another issue i think for people who are uh, still working but working from home and uh, in india in particularly in the urban areas i, I would say um, most of the uh, households have a husband wife both working and now probably because of work at home scenario they are spending too much time together let's say so previously there was a issue of togetherness there was no time now there is too much time and i guess this also must be uh, affecting in a certain way how what, what is your opinion on that it 100% it impacts people what i see very regularly is that this spilling over of work life and home life that has happened that can lead to sometimes a lot of conflicts mis- miscommunication or even isolation despite people family loved ones being around because people really from the moment that they wake up they're connected to their phones they're connected to their emails your work is just a click away you can open your laptop at 12 o'clock in the night on a sunday when you were and you can just get on it and you can do it and the spill over that i was saying is that previously you would get ready you would have maybe your breakfast time with your partners your spouses you'd get ready and then go to work and then come back home change and all of that and these things mark you know somewhere the start of your home life versus the start of your work life but now we don't have anything like that so a lot of times what we tell people is that if there is sort of you know even if it's it's become routine it's become mundane really take efforts to draw boundaries that you know even if it's 8 to 10 then keep your work from 8 to 10 uh try and identify smaller spaces in your house and limit your work to those spaces only mm-hmm. but in addition to that as couples if there are conflicts if there are miscommunications is there are there is conflicts or miscommunications an outcome of my increased stress or is there something that is a miss within our couple relationship do things at your individual level to manage your mental health and to manage your stress yeah. create boundaries with regards to your work delegate say no also the way you will prioritize your work find pockets of time within your day where you have the smallest of rituals to engage with your partner it could be having a cup of tea together it could be you know just end of the day sitting and discussing how your day went um it could be every sunday we come together and cook our lunch together you know so it's not for a healthy relationship it's not those big gestures that matter a lot but it's these everyday rituals which go on to build a healthy relationship so those are something which are really important if there are conflicts and there are consistent conflicts even in the couple relationship if you feel you need support you need help see your therapist for that um always process your conflicts you know when people are really hurt when people are really upset they don't it's it it becomes you versus i you know it's not you and i versus the problem so therefore take time to calm yourself down and then communicate communicate your needs don't blame don't cl- shut off don't close yourself from your partner but communicate what you need from them and then similarly they can communicate what is it that they can offer and what is it that they are not able to offer and that's when we'll be able to sort of you know really find a balance uh, between your work your personal life your relationships children and all of these the domestic abuse has increased drastically uh, i don't know if it is because of covid the domestic abuse has increased or do you feel that because of covid uh we are unable to really uh, sort of take a break from that domestic abuse which already existed yes due to covid there is enough data by the national commission of women in india or even data globally to prove that the incidences of domestic violence have increased um during the pandemic and during sort of um during this whole period 
some of the reasons that they have attributed to this increasing is also of course tensions being high pay cuts financial difficulties um cut women being cut off from or especially when we look at um domestic violence against women and girls they women being cut off from their support systems you know sometimes it could be relatives neighbors talking to people on calls and friends now the partner is or the person who may be perpetrating violence may be at home most of the time right. so there is there and there are financial abuse there is physical violence there is sexual violence which is also really of course neglect um verbal abuse and all of these things have really increased significantly that previously they could go to the hospital by themselves or they could go to a counseling center or a family counseling center or one stop crisis center by themselves due to covid many of these services working not working in some states and now most of them are working across the country but their access to these services was also somewhere hindered um so that led to difficulty in them being able to access services we also saw increased level of substance abuse which also then le- led to increased incidences of domestic violence at home um so these are some of the things that we have been seeing increasingly um in addition to this we are also seeing many more violation I and mean, these may not qualify as violence but there are many more violations in terms of you know sexual engagement or family uh, forcing or family pushing the uh, the woman to sort of you know what we call as double burden that you are caring for the how entire household you are also doing your office work you are doing all of it um so there are violations also that women are reporting a lot more and especially feeling that i don't have the space to negotiate this with my family a lot of negativity uh, i i feel coming from media side and that is also affecting mental health for many people yeah yeah, yeah absolutely um so i'm going to also link to and speak about this a little bit in, in the whole aspect of the lack of predictability right okay. because there is no not enough predictability in my life i may go to newspapers i may go to news channels to just know what is happening in the country what are the laws what are the norms which are changing today things are supposed to be open till 4 pm tomorrow it may be 11 o'clock day after day tomorrow it may be a lockdown so it's really to just keep up with the changing nature of our Ex- outside realities right um so a lot of times people are relying on this now one the kind of news which is being reported one is of course there aren't any happy news which are being reported or happy news are not usually reported through media and of course there is some amount of unethical reporting also which happens in terms of you know really sort of um, images which are disturbing content without any sort of trigger warning which is shared across social media or which is shared out across uh news channels and so on yeah. and we have had so many conversations with people who saying that you know that causes a lot of anxiety and it's the anticipation you know that causes a lot more anxiety and a lot more fear that okay now it's getting even worse or oh, now this is happening now that has happened people don't know how to process with process something like just watch your consumption and when we said watch your consumption consumption of news consumption of the kind of food you eat consumption of um substances that you may be relying on and that goes from coffee to alcohol to smoking to everything right um so watch how that impacts you and then work on limiting that also yeah. you know? yeah. um and sometimes if you need to just cut off from it then cut off from it for a few days for you to feel better for you to feel calm centered and then coming back to it there are many issues and you very uh, nicely uh, took us through all of them um there is as as we say that uh, stress is good actually but one needs to understand when it goes beyond your uh, capacity of handling that stress or if it is not really allowing you to you know do your daily functions properly then there is a need uh, of uh, seeking help and uh, that's what uh, we call it mental health mental health help um how i call can uh, help um so i call is a psychosocial helpline which offers free professional counseling services to clients across the world um primarily in india but we have clients who reach out from different parts of the country as well mm-hmm. um we cater to any issue that you think causes distress to you so there isn't anything that you know if it's if you're on suicidal if it's only a marital issue if it's only a issue of mental health diagnosis anything that causes distress to you you can reach out to us and seek professional counseling services all counselors who work with us are minimum masters in clinical or counseling psychology it's a free anonymous and confidential service and we are a project of a university based in um, india called the tata institute of social sciences so we have about seven indian languages in which we are offering services 
um and all you have to do is just pick up the phone or write an email um and talk about your distress um all the counselors who work with us are highly trained uh, to address crisis as well as non crisis situations some of the ways in which i call is different you know so one is of course we offer psychotherapy services counseling services and not just emotional first aid um but all counselors are trained to cater to uh, clients of cross ages gender sexual orientations geographies and issues in addition to all of this um counselors listen to clients understand their distress offer an empathizing support offer a validating space to clients help them with therapeutic techniques to address to help them make meaning of their experiences and also help them reach their goals whatever they may have outlined for themselves um in the cases where we feel that there are referral linkages required for clients sometimes people may need information in terms of where do i seek legal help from um what do i do if i need job advice where do i go for career advice where do i go for career assessment or so on so we link people to offline referral networks and we have a very wide network directory of uh, organizations who are working on the ground across the country uh, we do have a special helpline for covid um and the number is 9152987825 the covid helpline runs from 10 am to 6 pm indian standard time monday to saturday we have another helpline which is a long term counseling helpline um and the number for that helpline is 9152987821 that helpline runs from 8 am in the morning to 10 o'clock in the night um so this is a service which is available um again for seven six days a week and people can access and people can reach out on this service also they they want to write to us they can write to us on icall@tiss.edu for email based counseling i think all our viewers uh, will uh, definitely make use of this because i have seen many people around me uh, having these kind of issues they don't know what to do they don't know whom to talk to and uh, at times uh, friends and family is not enough they can't give you that mental uh, they can give you support but they can't really help you in uh, terms of mental health so this is something that i think is amazing and uh, people should use it people would will use it uh there is still probably a little bit of um a fear about uh you know there is a, a concept that if i go to take seek mental help is it is there something wrong with me so as you rightly said again this i call is totally anonymous you can uh, use this helpline i hope uh, everyone is staying at home and staying safe and staying healthy as well not just physically but uh, mentally as well thank you so much tanuja for sparing this time and talking to our viewers it was amazing talking to you see you again sometime with another topic